and then we can start. Okay, cool. Hi, welcome to U.S. Metal TV. I'm Matt McCourt, and today we've got Spandex Marco, the superstar headbanger from the Netherlands, and he's got a record label he's going to talk about. And uh, how are you doing today? Well, pretty fine. Pretty fine, uh, except some oh, oh, some issues I always have, but the rest is all okay. Listening to heavy metal music. There we go. We're here with Marco Spandex, Marco Van Empel. For, is that how you say your name? Van Empel. Van Empel, Van Empel. Van Empel, yeah. Okay. And he he's a big journalist in the Netherlands and uh, owns a record label. If, if you, I met him while uh, we played the uh, Nightmare over St. Pauli in 2009, Long. finally. It was cool. It was I very had, cool. I had Korea Black on the show just a couple months ago. They've got uh, Stone Cold Black has a new album out called Super Loud. It's, it's great. So By Antonio, eh? Antonio, mm -hmm. uh, Antonio Drago, LA, LA Survivor Records, eh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's been a friend of mine since 2003. I sent him to Vakken Open Air to cover the show with Katie Monique, who is a famous actress, now film director. She's got a bunch of films on Amazon and all over the place. She's a, yeah, she's great. But what have you got going right now? What I'm doing right now. Yes. Yeah. Well, I started my career in some sloppy bands, uh, back in the late eighties which sucked very, I wasn't, I wasn't a good musician uh, at the time, but you know, like every kid, I tried to play an instrument and tried to start a band. I wasn't that successful. So I start later organizing some shows and writing articles for a magazine. And, uh, well, we met in, uh, 2010, right? 2009. 2009. Yes. When I, wa when I was on tour with my, a uh, band where I was a sort of joker, uh, like of uh, like of mascot, living mascot for the band, and I was uh, helping in them with shows. The band was called Trashcore Fanatics, Trashcore band from uh, from the Netherlands. The bass player uh, as singer died recently in uh, in uh, in January, so rest in peace, Hans. And. Uh, now I do a record label called Headbangers Mag Records, named after my magazine, Headbangers Magazine, and after, named after uh, the shows I did, the Headbangers Concert, Headbangers Festival, where Korea Black also played with his band uh, Stone Cold Black back in 2009, I think, also around that eight time, in the same period, yeah, they, we booked them. So far back. <laughs> yeah, I have to think, yeah, that's right. Before the Corona. <laughs> oh yeah, w way far for, for before Corona, but Corona was a short time in, in life. I, I don't want to think about it anymore. For me, it's history. But you, you, you used to video call me and walk around during the curfew because you had special privilege. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. you know. Or you call me with a naked woman in your bed, or almost naked. That was great. I love that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, what well, I don't gonna mention the name of the girl, but uh, yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. What's in the name? <laughs> uh, no, I don't call the name. It's like a privacy, you know. I know, but what what does the name matter? <laughs> no, who cares? Right. So, what records are coming out right now on your label? Well, I'm gonna show you some st things. Wait a moment. I uh, have a, a few vinyls here with me. I got, I'm going to show them and tell a little bit about it. This is a German band called The Voids Embrace. It's uh, out for like a year. It's an older record already. It's not the newest, but I like to show this record because this band needs a lot of the needs deserves a lot of attention, which they don't get in the Netherlands sadly enough but this is a, a death metal band melodic death metal band from the from germany 
and they are awesome. They sound like at the gates and stuff like this. This is Scandinavian death metal from the 90s. It's really cool. And uh, I recommend this vinyl. I released on vinyl and tape, and uh, it's a discount now on my web shop. So if you go to my web shop, I give you the link later. They can, sh- can b- buy it by discount now because I can't rid of get cannot get rid of it. And it's very sad because it's a great album with great musicians and a great guy. So the Voice Embrace from Germany. When I was and then, huh? when I was in uh, Netherlands in 2002 with the mentors. Yeah. With Hammerhawk, there were so many great musicians in their practice place. It was uh, it was out by a mountain. Yeah, I'm out there. By uh, Bunker Island. And yeah. uh, man, so many great players and drummers. I couldn't believe it. And it finally I- occurred to me that every country has their own music scene. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. It never occurred to me that that, that was the thing. <laughs> I thought it was all American it, no, that, it's not. It, Dutch steel, you know, Dutch heavy metal is great. And I'm going to show you some more things about that from the Netherlands also. This is a band. This is a split LP we did with two Dutch bands. One is called Incursion Dementia. It's an old thrash metal band from the 80s and 90s. 80s. And uh, they we did a split LP with a young band called Abmoron. They are from the north of the Netherlands and they are... They are both thrash metal bands, and I released a split LP, which is also available for a very fair price, so go get it. Uh, An English band, Heavy Rain. It's a a, a record I released together with a Spanish label and also with another label from the Netherlands called Big Bad Wolf Records I do more releases with. It's a label from the north. And this is a LP for, with uh, rare recordings from the 1974. It's uh, never released before. It's classic rock, like you know, pure classic hard rock, rock. And uh, highly recommend it. Released on black and uh, and colored vinyl. Wow, I haven't had a turntable since 1986. Oh, but I have you also <laughs> CDs for you. I can show you later. Also. This is Swart. It's a black metal band from the Netherlands, from Tilburg, from my hometown. It's uh, it's like it's very dark music, extreme metal from my hometown. Great band. I, and then we have here a band from Canada. It's called X Hat. I don't know if you know the guy. It's called Joe Joe Steele from Canada. A nope. famous guy in the in the underground, and uh, he, this is metal punk, pure metal punk from Canada, and released released the LP. It's great metal punk from 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 Ontario, Canada. So not so far. Now nah, you're you're from C- Portland, eh? Yes, on the other side of the the country of from Ontario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the west side, baby. West Side Coast. Oh, yeah, that's that's the. Uh, I you t- you told me about your touring work with Snoop Dogg, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I worked on la- the Up and Smoke tour with uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Ice Cube, oh. a- and uh, I think that was it. Boy, that was a great great show. I always had a secret place for this kind of music in my heart, so it's really cool. Secretly, I love it. <laughs> And it's the CD of Heavy Rain, uh, Bad Habit, Dutch Steel, Dutch Heavy Metal from my hometown, Tilburg. Uh, this is an, uh, I, did, I did this t- t- alone in uh, in the Netherlands, Headbangers Records, Bad, Bad, Hop, Bad Habit. And this is a reissue made in USA by a label from Seattle called Pick Records. You know the label Pick Records? No. They're from Seattle. I, I'm not familiar. So, oh, so just I have a lot of plenty of more if you want. Most of the people that are watching are they probably only know Amsterdam. Whereabouts in the country is Tilburg? Tilburg is uh, not far from Belgium. It's about uh, I can f- walk walk to Belgium. I can go by feet to Belgium. It's like maybe a half hour walking, but it's also close to Eindhoven, 
which is not uh, which is known by the Dynamo Festival and all the concerts and lo- famous town for metal. Eindhoven is not far. And Roadrunner Records used to be in Eindhoven. No, yeah, were they not based in Amsterdam actually? No, when I was on Roadrunner for Doctor Mastermind, they were in Eindhoven. Okay, I know the the, the guys of Ashok are from Eindhoven, and they did a lot of work for. They they worked a lot together with Roadrunner. I know that. Yeah, I used to I used to talk to a guy named uh, uh, I forgot his first name Van Zyl. And, Stefan Van Zyl. And yeah, he, he has um I think another label now. But he was working publicly for Dr. Mastermind. I used to do, he would set up these interviews with the great cat. Oh, wow. Yeah, great cat. And me on the same line. And <laughs> and she never drops character, man. She's crazy. What's the name? The great cat. Have you met, ever met her? No, I only talked to her on the phone. Oh, uh. I know a, f- a friend of mine. He was he had, was in touch with uh, with her back in the back in the day uh, with uh, letters and stuff. He told me also she was a crazy woman. <laughs> Except she has a, a Hawaiian pool party every year at her house. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Oh wow! But she's in New York. That's the other side of the world for me. So yeah. what else you got going? You got? Are you putting on any concerts or festivals? I booked a hardcore hardcore metal band like uh, from England uh, recently in uh, Little Devil. It's a bar here in town, and uh, I booked a show uh, together with a, a band from my label called Indulgence. I'm gonna release our CD, and uh, well, I don't do that much shows anymore. Uh, sadly enough, uh, it's the high, there's no spot for me to do to do that much shows anymore so uh i'm more focused on the label and uh and the youtube channel and everything how and, is how is uh the record sales at least for me hmm? everybody else seems to say the same thing that the record sales are really slow these days sadly yes sadly yes same here wow i it's only spending money and no you don't get you don't you you we are happy that we have the money back at least but we most of the time we uh, lose only money with the label only losing but you know even the wild dogs but they only sold 700 copies of the original vinyls that's it i have one <laughs> it's rare i'm the, i I'm, have i made a video yesterday i'm the best kept secret in heavy metal <laughs> well, I knew you. I knew you. I already had the vinyl before we ever met. So, uh, but I'm a big fan of of U.S. metal and uh, Wild Dogs. Yeah, quite an underrated underground cult band from from Portland, of course. I love it. Have you ever met Glacier? I haven't. <clears throat> I am in touch on Facebook with them, but I have not. No personal. Co- I've no never met them or something. Glacier. Yeah, Mike Podrebo, the singer, he's been doing quite a bit of touring with his band. Uh, he's got a band that's based in Chicago. Yeah? Yeah, and they do all the festivals. I haven't played a gig. I'm, I'm done. My last show was 2018 at the uh, book release for this book called Rusted Metal. It's uh, by the guy, a guy up in Seattle who mm-hmm. uh, put a book out on the 70s and 80s and 90s rock and metal scene in the area it's about cool. it's about five inches thick it's huge and uh what can they get the book is it available or you have to order online or something um i'm not sure you can get mm. a you can get a digital copy that's they gave me yeah, one of those, i hate I, I don't know until fu- sucks i don't know where it went oh. <laughs> i mean they sent me one but I mean, there's so many bands that you never have heard about. I'm in there six times. <laughs> yeah, but the Ravers, Wild Dogs, Doctor Mastermind, Mayhem, and I guess I'm only one, two, three, only four. <laughs> but uh, northeast of uh, USA had great bands back in the day. Fifth Angel, uh, 
uh, with the full, uh, what's the name of the band of uh, culprit? Uh, of course, wild dog, wild dogs. You know, there's a lot of yeah. We played mentors. Our, we played our first show ever with the culprit and with Mike Varney's band Cinema. Cinema. I don't know that band. That had a singer named Harry Carey and Mike Barney played guitar. Uh huh. Mike Barney's the owner of Shrapnel Records, and he sold out a few years ago. And uh, that was in San Francisco. That was pretty cool. Then uh, Sam, uh, Scott Earl from Culprit yeah. said, why don't you come up to Seattle next week and play shows here? So we started playing there, and our hometown was they're always the last place to uh, know anything. <laughs> and after wow. after we got known someplace else, then the people yeah. lo- locally were like, well, we, we made this band. No, you didn't. <laughs> we played everywhere else before we played Portland. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you told me also that there was always less support from your, from the, from the, from the local scene, right? Yes. Yeah. But, but that's, you know, it's, it's always, always that something from far away is, is always more popular than something from close by, nearby for some people. Some people always look at from look look at for for far away, you know. While there's a lot of cool stuff in the in the near area. Do you, have you ever heard of Tanya Harding, the ice skater? Which the, which the Olympic ice skater who broke the girl's leg she was competing against it was a while ago that pretty much sums up the uh mindset of portland oregon okay she had somebody break the leg of the other ice skater that could beat her <laughs> in, wow. the, in the olympics that's a crazy story <laughs> yeah she used to she worked at a, at this mall where I worked at a, a coffee store, and she was uh-huh. she was having a thing with the, another guy that worked with me, and I caught him out in the truck in their truck having sex, and I said, "You guys mm-hmm. should not shouldn't do that out here. Do it in the back room." So, so they're always screwing in the back room of the coffee store. <laughs> wow, crazy! <laughs> yeah, insane. <laughs> So how how have you been? Have you, uh, you? I've been seeing you go on trips to America. Like last yeah. year, you went to San Francisco. Yeah, two, a few years ago, and now I go to uh, New York in September. I've never been to New York. Never. Okay. No, I haven't been east ever. Don't no, except, I played Chicago one time in two thousand five. And that's also long, that's on the other side of the. From Seattle, it's far away, yeah? Yes. It's on the, uh, like I say, the other side of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get past but, there, that's where the, the fans of wild dogs are in the Midwest. Really? Yes. Yeah. Chicago, Wisconsin, uh, Ohio, Illinois, that area right there, I call the gravy belt. <laughs> Wow. Because they like gravy on stuff. <laughs> yeah, crazy. So, uh, I just, I've been doing comedy and uh, I've been promoting stuff on Netflix l- lately, like Seinfeld. Really? You know, Seinfeld's movie, uh, Unfrosted. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And uh, John Mulaney's six part series called Everybody's in LA. So, uh, I would love to get a job at Netflix. Oh, that would be a good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite series on Netflix, by the way? Right now, it's Resident Alien. Yeah? yeah? I haven't seen that one. Oh, before that, it was Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And Resident Alien has a guy named Alan Tudyk. It's about uh-huh. an alien that comes to blow up the Earth. Oh, wow. Is Spaceship crashes. It's a comedy. <laughs> but you're into uh, you're you're a science fiction fan, right? Yes, I, yes. I I was born in America, but I was infused with alien DNA when I was a baby. Oh wow! That's you're what, a, what happened to me. 
So I have a secret love for my extraterrestrial family. Say hello to them. I will. Uh. <laughs> but the uh, in Resident Alien, uh -huh. the, guy, the guy is a seven foot or eight foot like alien monster guy, and uh -huh. he kills this guy and takes over his DNA and becomes uh -huh. becomes him and becomes a town doctor. It's in a little town in Colorado. And he keeps becoming more and more human. And yeah. it's, it's it's really funny. He'll he'll get things like this one cop said, I can feel it in my nuts. He goes, Well, don't trust your nuts there. Don't trust oh he said, I can feel it in my balls. And he says, Don't trust your balls, they're nuts. <laughs> I made a joke. He's he that's how he acts. It's it's, yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. Awesome. It was on the sci fi channel. But uh yeah, that's um, just been Madison Avenue. I'm either Madison Avenue or this guy. <laughs> oh, and I, I've been. Uh, have you seen the Talking Cat? Yeah, <laughs> that's my cat, Misha. Really? Oh, you made you uh, you, you edit that uh, in the, the. Yeah, he hosted. He hosts. Yeah, he hosts. He hosts the shows. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of them. I. See. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yes. I saw it. Yes, Dean Castronovo. Are you? Were you a uh, hyperactive puppy? <laughs> and Dean. What does he say? And Dean just starts going nuts. I mean, like you know, <laughs> he's hyper. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. pretty funny. But I made Dean, it, huh? Go ahead. No, no. Dean was also in Wild Dogs, eh? So yeah, maybe you know, yeah. People, yeah. Yeah, and then Dr. Mastermind and moved to California because I knew that if just if somebody in the real music business saw him, he would get out of here and get a big deal. He's been playing with Journey for 25 years. Yeah, <laughs> biggest band, uh, one of the biggest melodic rock bands in the world. Wow, they sell out arenas like in two days with one other band. They've been touring a lot with Toto, and this summer, they're coming to Europe in the summer. Really? They're going to Japan and Europe, and then when they come back, they're going to uh, do a stadium tour with Def Leppard, Steve Miller, Cheap Trick, and Hart. In America? Yes. Wow. I would love to go there. I would love to see that. I love this melodic rock from America. It's really... I, we don't have that here so much here in uh, in Europe, this kind of AOR melodic rock, hard rock. We well, don't see it here. Dean played with the Dead Daisies, and they played in uh, Europe quite a bit. They're on the radio a, a lot there. Yeah, I've seen them a few times. I have seen them a few times. They, I saw them as support act recently for, I'm not sure, a few years ago, ACDC maybe, I think so. Not sure, but I, I've seen the Dead Daisies uh, a few times, yeah. You know, and in Journey, Dean sings too. He sings like one or two songs. He sang the whole set for a, a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I said, "Why don't um, you just ask for more money, push your drums up to the front, and sing?" He goes, "No, too much work." <laughs> wow, not too much work. Also, too much, uh, not much cash for him. <laughs> I think he does okay. <laughs> yeah. As a drummer, wow. the, the the bass player is also from Portland, Oregon. Really? Yeah, he played in a band with Dane called Hardline with Neil Sean from Journey, and he was in a cover band forever in Portland. And then he went to L.A. and he played bass for David Lee Roth. He played bass for Alice Cooper for years. Wow, cool! And then uh, when Dean got into Hardline, he called him up and pulled him into that, and he's. He's on stage with Journey. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, I can't imagine being on that big of a stage. I asked I asked him, so can you hear anything? Oh, bro, I've got in ear monitors. I hear everything perfectly. Uh, no more loud monitors. It's all in my ear. Oh. What's the biggest show you played? No, me? Uh, about, 
I think we play we played with rail to like five thousand people. Five thousand. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and well, the head well, duh, the headbangers open air. Yeah, I was there in two thousand eight, and there was like five thousand people there. I can't break the five thousand barrier. <laughs> that's but, two, uh, two, that's just before we met, right? A, a year before, yes. Yeah, I was there too, but I we didn't met. I or could be that there we met, but not sure. We met at least in São Paulo at the at the festival uh, was organized by Anthony, right? Yes. Yeah. No, by Jurgen. Oh, yeah. No, the the St. Pauli was by Korea and Dirk and uh, Anthony. Yes. Anthony Get- Drago from Roma. I love that oh, guy. It's, uh, it's awesome. He's- I also have a crazy story about uh, Korea Black. <laughs> There's probably a few. <laughs> well, I I invited uh, Stoko Black uh, in my festival, in Headbangers Festival, Tilburg. And uh, uh, the day before, he already came to my house and we had a party. And the day after was the festival. And I t- told him, you can drink as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford him. <laughs> no. You know you know that he drank the whole... He drank everything. And then, uh, <laughs> and then they ha- we have... They have to help him on stage because he was so drunk. <laughs> but when he was on stage, he gave a hell of a show. That was very... Uh, he was, he couldn't walk, but when he was finally on stage, <laughs> he, he put a hell of a show away. It was really... It's the lights. The lights give you life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was crazy. I, I remember this guy. It was really cool guys. And there was also a guy, a bald guy who was kind of roadie or something with a, with a golden teeth. With a lighting, lighting thunder on his teeth. Ah, what was his name? It was a crazy guy. He was hanging around with them. Ah, crazy times. I, I love that band. A really cool band from Hamburg, right? They're from yes. Hamburg, eh? yeah. Well, a- yeah. Actually, he's from. Uh, uh, it starts with an L. Uh, it's just down the road from Hamburg. <laughs> uh, but Hanover? Uh, no, L. Uh, Oh man, it's between Lübeck. Yeah, that's it. Between uh, Hamburg and Berlin. Yes, he'd always say, Satan says. Korea says. Satan. Korea says that. He goes, Satan says, drink and drive. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drink and drive. Yeah, and that it, was awesome. Him and his friend told me, Matt, you're in Germany now. You can do anything you want. <laughs> Why, in Germany? And I thought, I'd, I heard from other people. No, you can't. Do that. No, you can't. In Germany, you you can you can do a lot of things. In America, you can't do in Germany. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Now, Dirk and him put the Watchtower Festival on in Lubeck. That have uh, um, vicious rumors and yeah. Neil Turbin from Anthrax and yeah, he was put- there too, huh? Right. On the yeah. Sao Paulo festival, yeah, 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 they were trashing the dressing room because we <laughs> were taking too long. But I said I was talking to Paul Diano at the time, on, yeah, online, and I said my friends putting a festival together, and I asked them, I said, "Do you want to have Paul Diano?" They said, "Yes," and so I put them together, and he played the festival in Lubeck too at the Watchtower. So it's, that's pretty fun. Wow. <laughs> I like Paul. Paul, have you ever? I never met him just online, but he can't come to America because he <laughs> he's banned. Yeah, for a lot of yeah, I know. I heard the stories. Yeah, you he don't have to for, don't have to go home, but you can't come back to the U.S. <laughs> hey, it's it's fun. I heard stories from people who drove too fast and who can't go and from America. Who drove too fast and already have a ban from Canada for that. Oh, wow. You know, I the, the 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 restrictions to get in the America or in get to Canada, they're they're pretty heavy, right? In Holland, everybody can come in, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you have money to spend in Holland, we want you. <laughs> yeah, well, but in they, Canada, they, 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 there's so many bands that we were going to be the opening act, and they were touring, 
and yeah. they couldn't get into America because they had a van full of band equipment. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's so so many groups we were like the support act for and they couldn't make it in. Wow. That happened with Metallica, except their truck got ripped off. We had we were gonna be the opening band for Metallica on the tour right before they recorded Ride the Lightning. Mm-hmm. So we got to the first gig it's in Seattle. I have the posters. <laughs> I get to the first gig and we set up and the pro- promoter says, Matt, uh, Metallica can't make it. What? And I thought, oh, God, this is going to be horrible. I said, do you have a... Yeah, of course. you have a tennis racket or a shield? Why? I said, because the bottles are going to fly. Yeah, I can imagine. Because people won't want to see wild dogs. We came to see Metallica. <laughs> and pe- <laughs> people tell me from my hometown, Uh huh. oh, I was at that show. You guys are great with Metallica. Oh yeah, <laughs> they only saw the t- they only saw the posters, but I didn't know they were they, they were not there. So yeah, the show was canceled. Yeah, <laughs> we have fifteen dates on that tour, and we would have had <laughs> we played with Slayer a couple times, and it was just hell for us. The people did not want to see Wild Dogs. <laughs> Basically, I think because somebody wore spandex in the band. And if you uh, liked them, then you can't like yeah. us. I, I talked I to did. Harold. I had Harold on the show a couple of months ago. Ah, uh, Harold. He was he was at my place. He's a cool guy. Harold from XDRI and a, a photographer from Murder at the Front Row. Yeah. Yeah. Harold was, is awesome. He was great. We knew a lot of the same people. Yeah. Harold is a crazy, great, great guy. He always walks with the camera in his hand and he makes all, he always make the best photos in the metal scene. I've never met him before, but uh, we knew a lot of the same people. Yeah. He's a, he, I, he was, a, he, he, I invited him at, at my place when they, they played in Dynamo and uh, Dynamo Metal Fest. And uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, he really nice guy. Very down to earth, very normal guy. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, if you know his uh, his disco, uh, his, his uh, CV, you know is uh, what he saw, what he did in the uh, through the years, and who he met, and he, who he knows. It's insane. This guy knows everyone. Uh. I knew a lot of the same people, like uh, KJ Downton, the Metallica fan club guy, and the, Brian Liu, the guy that did the book. Um, with yeah, they yeah. Were, they were some of our first friends in wow. San Francisco. Oh man, the times were. We should probably wrap this up. Yeah, we're running out of time. But thank you so much for coming on and doing the show here at the U.S. Metal TV Show. It's don't you don't do it backwards. That's that's a sign that you're there. You go, ah. palm, palm out. Otherwise, you don't want to know what this means. Actually, you know what this means? The horns of Satan. No, it's the ad. It's the worldwide. Cat Lovers Association. Meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> because if you put your hand up, the cat will come to you. Really? If you do it like that, I will try it. I have your dog here. Flix him. I love cats. I, I, and dogs? I love cats more. I love dogs more. So come, 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 come. Come. This is good. Good luck. Look at, look at, look, 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 look. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you for the interview, uh, Matt, and thank you for the support. Uh, thank you very much. So, give me your the web your your web your web address, and I'll put that on yeah. the show. And uh, thank I you very it, much, my friend. Trying to get somebody to buy the stuff. Thank you very much. I always give discount with the pay, pay uh, a lot of stuff, and uh, I am uh, not. Uh, I'm a very loyal business guy, so uh, if you want to do the trades or wholesale, no problem. Just contact me. Welcome okay. for everything. Our bands wants to have a label and who maybe could would be interested to contact me. You can also contact me. Okay, great. So thank you, Marco Van Ampel. Van Ampel. Thank you. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Nearly. It's, hard, it's hard enough to talk, rather than talk in a different language. And uh, from 
Tilburg, Tilburg Rock, Tilburg Rock City. All right, and uh, hopefully someday we can meet again. I hope so. Uh, maybe someday I come to uh, to the northeast from uh, from North- uh, from the USA. Northwest. Northwest. Otherwise, I'm in Chicago. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're <laughs> just up the road from San Francisco, about 600 miles. Uh it's nothing, huh? Uh, 12 hours. Okay. We used to be able to get in the van at midnight and get there at noon. Okay. Cool. We played in San Francisco a lot. Yeah. Yeah, Harold saw us a bunch of times there. Uh and he saw you, but you never, you didn't met at the time. No. But now, yeah. And I met everybody. That was what I do at shows. Go around and shake mm. hands. Yeah. Oh, I am running for governor. <laughs> Vote for me in the next election. Yeah. Elect me, select me, elect me for man of the year. I will, I will. Dr. Huh? Mastermind. Yeah. I have I have it here the final Doctor Mastermind, Mastermind. I pretty have all your records, but I, this is my. That's a great shirt. My, I like that. Oh, I, you? Des- I designed that. <laughs> I okay, designed thank that. you for. I'm an artist. <laughs> yeah, you did it great. It's a great shirt, and I'm it's a, good quality too. Buy you. the T-shirts and records from Matt Court. <laughs> Yeah, I have a lot of them. I only got three dozen, but I have a lot left. <laughs> okay. I will okay. tell people to order. Okay. Well, I will do the same for you and have a good day. And thank you for being on U.S. Mental TV. And we'll talk to you later, Marco. Okay. I will call you in the night. Okay. Bye. Bye.